This is uh, Saturday before Easter, and we're at the Gibbon City Park, and we're here for the Min Minwest Bank Thumbody Club Easter Egg Hunt. We have lots of eggs hidden around, and we have lots of kids just chomping at the bit here, ready to find some eggs. After you found your seven eggs, if you want to come back here, you can have a Rice Krispie bar, and we'll have some juice. Five eggs! Hi, I'm Weston Anderson and I'm interviewing Brian Kufall. Can you tell us what you're doing today? We're building wooden stools with the kindergarten kids. Do you have a lot of fun with doing the stools? Well, we've done the stools. I've been here for 10 years and we've done the stools all those 10 years. And uh, the kids enjoy them and I think the parents even enjoy them more. How many years have you been doing this project? My, my father started this project and um, and he's sick the last while so I've kind of agreed to step in and, and cover the project for him and, and uh, he's been doing all the schools, uh, the kindergarten classes in Sibley County and um, I think he's been doing it for about 12 years. Well we're really thankful for uh, having this crew of men from Gaylord come over. Uh, the person that started it is not able to make it today, and um, Albi Kufal is his name, and uh, just a charming gentleman, and he put this all together, and, and it's really been a successful program for us. Yeah, I had a lot of fun doing it myself. Do you still have your step stool? Yes, I do. What's one of the neatest parts of doing this project? Well, what the kindergarten kids do is they, they're supposed to bring a parent or a grandparent with them and uh, they assemble this wooden stool and they'll put it together and then they'll paint it. So it's kind of fun to watch the, the parents and the grandparents interact with the kindergarten kids and a lot of the kids it's uh, maybe the first time that they've built anything so it's uh, kind of fun to watch them and a lot of them have an awful good time doing it. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, just that um, there's uh, probably eight grandpas with me today and uh, all of these people come and volunteer their time and a lot of them spend a lot of time cutting wood, sanding wood, drilling. Uh, there's a lot of prep work to be done before we actually get to the class and uh, this is all volunteer work so uh, I commend all the people that have helped over the years and, and the guys that are with me today to help out. Thank you very much for the interview. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Lauren Meyer with KGFW and I'm interviewing. Randall Harder. Thank you for coming today. Can you tell us a little bit about your job? Well, I work for uh, AM 1230, The Fan, Country 1035, and 93 KXLP in Mankato. I am uh, the news and sports director for the stations. I am also in charge of programming and what they call imaging for The Fan in Mankato. I do newscasts on KXLP and Country 1035, and I also do news and sports and some play-by-play -play on uh, The Fan. What's one of your favorite memories from working on the radio? That's a hard one because I have a lot of them. Uh, in sports, my favorite memories are probably some of the athletes I get to meet. Uh, people like Kirby Puckett and Randy Moss, they're fun to be a part of. Getting to uh, go to games and, and sit there and watch them and, and get to interview them, I like doing that. Uh, from news, it's getting the chance to go out and talk to people about uh, things that are going on in their life, uh, covering events that are important to people, and, uh, and being able to relay that on the radio to people. Do you ever get neighbors? Not so much anymore, but every once in a while I get to interview someone that really makes me nervous, uh, either because they're a really big celebrity and that can kind of be intimidating even if you've interviewed them a bunch before. Uh, also sometimes you get nervous just because maybe you're not as prepared as you should be to do an interview and you don't have your questions all lined up. Sometimes that gets you nervous but usually you can uh, get going in the interview and then uh, things go pretty well. 
Who was your role model when you were growing up? For sports, my role model was Harmon Killebrew. He was an old player for the Minnesota Twins, and I idolized him, and he was a, I was a fan of his. My grandpa was a fan of his. That's how I kind of liked him. I always had to wear his number three on my jersey, and I got to meet him a couple years ago, and I really that really meant a lot to me to get a chance to meet him and uh, get his autograph. And my uh, mom and dad were a role model for me as well. They uh, taught me a lot of good stuff growing up, and I think a lot of what I am is because of my mom and dad. What was your favorite part about growing up in a small town? Well, I grew up in the small town of Cortland, so it's very much like Gibbon and a lot of the communities around here. Just the friendships I had with people that I grew up with. When people look back at your career, how would you like to be remembered? I hope I'm remembered as someone who cared about our listeners, who uh, respected our listeners, even those who maybe were the ones that were getting, oftentimes you have to report news that's bad. You know, people sometimes get in trouble and you have to talk about it on the radio. Hopefully, even in those cases, uh, people can look and know that I'm uh, treating them fairly and uh, treating them with... Uh, you know, everybody deserves some respect. So hopefully, you know, someone that they can count on, that I can be relied upon to give them uh, accurate information, and, and that they can turn to me when they need to know what's going on. Do you have any advice for your niece? <laughs> be good. Always listen to your parents, listen to your teachers, and always just um, do what's right. Thanks for the interview. Is there anything else you'd like to say? I would just like to thank you and your classmates for having me up here to talk with you, and I really like you having you as my niece. <laughs> I'll listen for you on the radio. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kimberly Keen, and I'm from KGFW episode 10, and we're going to Carol Evans Station. Hi, I'm Kimberly Keen from KGFW, and we are going to Carol Evans Studios. I get it right? You got it right. Yes! <laughs> dangerous place where Frank would tell you to punch buttons. <laughs> you could really mess things up. Hi, I'm Kelly Lurkey and we're in K 11 Studios and I'm interviewing Belinda Jensen. How are you doing, Kelly? Good. Good. What's your last name, Kelly? Lurkey. Lurkey. How old are you? Ten. Ten. And now I'm interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's good to be here. We got an email from your teacher, and he asked if we could come down to Gibbon. But because it's such a kind of a far drive for us, and we're, we've got all these things going on here, we asked you guys to come to us. And you're standing out here in the backyard, and it's raining, which is good because I do the weather. weather. And so when it's raining and people do the weather, they're happy because there's actually some weather going on here in the backyard. Why are you trying to involve students in science? Why am I trying to involve? That's a good question. I do try to involve kids in science. I have for the entire time I've been doing this, which has been about uh, 14 years now. And I try to get girls and people involved in science, a lot of girls involved in science, because I think what people think is they think of scientists and they think of, you know, the crazy nerdy guy with the glasses with the long white coat and he's in the laboratory and there's smoke billowing everywhere and he's looking in the little telescope or the little microscope like this. Is that what you think of when you think of scientists? Yeah. Okay, see that's what I think of too. But I want to let you know that scientists can be girls, scientists can be athletes, scientists can be boys, scientists can be tall, short, have glasses, have long hair, have short hair, doesn't matter. So that's how I like to go out because I'm a scientist. And I usually don't look so wacky, right? A little wacky today, though. Who are your role models? What's your name, first of all, last name? Jordan Black. 
That's a good question. I don't get asked that very much. Well, in weather, I would have to say my role model growing up was Paul Douglas. Do you know who Paul Douglas is? Yeah, he does the weather on Channel 4. He used to do the weather here. Did you know that? This was his backyard before we took it over. <laughs> and so we, um, when I was growing up and when I was in high school, I interviewed him on the phone. And he answered my questions. And I wrote a paper about meteorology. And so he was one of my role models. I also had a really good teacher when I was in high school. And his name was Mr. Gavin. And his name was, he was a great teacher, Dan Gavin. And he helped me a lot get into meteorology. And then I had a really good science teacher when I was at college at Wisconsin who was really good too and she was an older woman who was a science teacher and there weren't very many women teaching science back then so she was a role model of mine too. Um, I'm Connor and what's your favorite time of the year? Oh that's a great question. My favorite time of the year is September, is autumn. Do you guys like autumn? I know school starts which is kind of rough but you know autumn has the best weather because autumn the days are still long enough you can get out and enjoy them. The humidity level is low, the leaves are blazing orange and red and yellow and beautiful and you know it's the last waning hours of summer and it's warm and it's the humidity's low and there's usually no storms and that's why I love autumn I love autumn it's my favorite favorite time. what's your favorite time um autumn also you like autumn as well because you like football I bet huh yeah I know a lot of people like autumn because of football too I like college football as well how long did you go to college I went to college for four years at the University of Wisconsin, and then I went for three years at the University of Utah. What time did you get up? Well, you know what, the deal about television, and Julie will tell you this, ask her this, there are no glamorous hours in television. Because if you think about it, we have to be on TV when most of the, the world is home. Because that's when you watch us. So we're on TV early in the morning, like five in the morning, we're on TV during the dinner hour, five, six, and 10. We're on TV right before de bedtime, 10. The Saturday morning show is from eight to 10. So there are no glamorous, there's no nine to five shift in television. When people look back at your career, how would you like to be remembered? That's a really good question, Kelly. Hmm. I would like people to know that I had a great time and I hope that that came across on the little TV screens in their house. I hope that they learned a little bit about meteorology and the environment. I hope that they learned a little bit about gardening and why that's so fun and growing things because that's what I do here at Care 11 as well. I hope that they come away knowing that um, I appreciated them watching me and helping me with my career because if you guys watch, then we get to stay on TV. That's how it works. And I had a great time meeting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people like you guys and hundreds and hundreds of guests and that's what's so great about this and also of course i hope every once in a while they thought the forecast was pretty correct as well because we work really hard on that as, as well so we try to be very accurate here and we try to have a good time and we try to uh, really be in touch with what's going on in the community thanks a lot for your time belinda and we'll continue on okay kelly good luck with your tour Thanks. Right. Welcome to Care 11. This is where we all get party. Right, Bonnie? Yep. Yep. You want to show them your fancy sure. machine? Now, Who has that hand? Hand? the ladies, anyway, you've seen typical makeup, oh, right? Like this powder, mascara. <laughs> but what we do here at Care is we get our makeup sprayed on with an airbrush. We'll be out in two seconds. You better be. I know, this you got stuff to do. This is my time. <laughs> Okay, who's got a mark on a hand here? Something we, we need a freckle. He's got a little mark on oh, his yeah. hand. Right here. Or a freckle? Okay. Here. Nice. Here. Oh, see now you spray the makeup on. Yep. And pretty soon all those little marks disappear. Okay, it's gonna disappear. As you get older, you'll understand the importance of that. <laughs> all your flawless skin. Okay. Okay. My name's Allison Iacone, and I'm the 10 o'clock producer. I care. What I do is kind of the same thing that you guys did. Is that you kind of kind of pick your stories and you choose what your, you want your stories to be, and then we have reporters, and so we'll assign one or two reporters or three reporters to the stories that we want to do and then those are kind of the longer stories and then we do a lot of the littler stories that are 15 or 20 seconds long and I write all those so um, we have all kinds of video from NBC all the kind of you know crazy stuff that's going on all around the country and then the stuff that's happening here 
and I just pick and choose. So when you're watching the news and you see like five or six or seven little stories in a row, those are all stories that I've picked and those are stories that I wrote. And that's kind of what my job is, is making sure that the newscast is complete from beginning to end. Yes, now you walk through the door. Backdrop. Uh, 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 chats, chats, chats. Frank and John, not too hard to take. Friday, little rain on the weekend, but we do need it. Pretty desperate. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're just amazing. Can't wait that blue. We can't see nothing. Pointing at nothing. Look at the camera. See, the funny thing is when we're out there, when she's out there, and when I'm out there, we're out there alone. So we're pointing at nothing, talking to nobody. I know. Hi, I'm Kimberly Keen. I'm from KGFW interviewing Julie Nelson with CARE 11. What are your duties at CARE 11? Well, I do the 10 o'clock news here, and I also report on some stories uh, for our newscasts. And my main duties are to represent the station in the community, and also from 10 to 10.30, Monday through Friday, I anchor the news with Frank Vassalero. I'm yes. on kind of late. Oh, I stay up until 10. Kimberly stays up till 10. Put that on the news. Okay, good. Who are your role models when you were growing up? I was a big fan of Jane Pauley, who was on NBC. She's no longer on NBC, but when I was growing up, she did the Today Show in the mornings on NBC. And I liked her because I thought she was very warm, but she was also very knowledgeable. She could crack a joke, but she could also do serious interviews. And I admire Katie Kirk for the same reasons. I think that's one of the most complicated jobs you can have in television news, to switch gears like that from the funny stories, the entertainment stories, to the very serious stories as well. What is your, one of your favorite memories from working on TV? I love to get out and do stories in the community. I do a piece every Thursday here at CARE called Neighbors, and it's a great uh, franchise to be associated with because we so often in news have to go out and do stories that are sad that affect people in bad ways you know if their son or daughter was in the war and something happened or if there was a murder or a fire a lot of times you have sad stories in the news but the stories that I get to work on are about people helping people in their neighborhoods and you meet the most fascinating people and it really warms your heart to see how much good is being done out there especially when you have to deliver bad news to people people on a nightly basis too. Do you have a pet and if you do what kind do you have? I do. I have a dog and he's a yellow lab and his name is Captain Chaos and he'll be two in October. So we got him two years ago and he was just this little white puff and we got him in December and so when he would run outside in our yard it was hard to see him except he had a black nose. That's the only way we could find out where he was. So he's adorable but he's shedding his winter coat right now so if anybody wants to adopt a dog call me. <laughs> Where did you grow up? I grew up about 90 minutes east of the Twin Cities in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. It's a town of about 65,000 people. And so this is the nearest big city to my hometown. My parents still live in Eau Claire, and my sister lives in St. Paul. What are one of your favorite memories from elementary school? Well, we didn't have a cool program like this when I was in elementary school. That probably would have been some of my favorite memories. Um, I grew up right next door to our elementary school and we had an ice rink that they built every year so being able to just walk right down the block and go ice skating at my elementary school was one of my favorite things and you know most of my favorite memories that I have involve my teachers I had a couple very good teachers and when I think back on them and all I learned from them you want to thank them later so make sure you thank Mr. Werner now because someday you'll look back and go, wow, he did an awful lot for me. I didn't even realize how hard he worked for me. So can we say thank you, Mr. Werner? Let's get it on tape. Thank, thank you, Mr. Werner. Oh, you guys are always, thank you guys. This is, this is fun for me. If you could meet any celebrity, who would you meet? Mm, that's a good one. You know, we get to meet some pretty famous people when we do this job. But my favorite people to interview are comedians. I would love to have coffee with Bonnie Hunt. See, they're all going, who? What are you talking about? Uh, you know, I've interviewed singers, uh, Governor Ventura, um, Reba McIntyre. I actually have been fortunate enough to interview the president. And they're all 
fascinating interviews, but just a really fun interview, I think, would be with somebody like Bonnie Hunt, people that just make me laugh. I like to laugh. When people look back at your career, how do you want to be remembered? Uh, as compassionate, as helpful, and I would hope as someone that they trusted and that I earned that trust and deserved it. Thanks for your time, and we wish you the best. Thank you, Kimberly, and thanks for coming. Now, pizza! <laughs>